one, thank you all for coming out, but let me be the first to officially introduce to you the largest Republican majority in the history of this state. You know, when we walk in here, I'm beginning to reflect. When I was a kid, my oldest brother, uh, his favorite movie was the movie Jaws. And in a portion of that movie, Roy Scheider goes, I think we're going to need a bigger boat. <laughs> and, uh, and I tell you what, if we have an ele another election cycle like 2010, we're going to need a bigger room. You know? But uh, anyway, thank you all for coming out here. It's an exciting day. We have a lot of new members who, who, are, who now have the honor and the privilege to serve in the Missouri House. Uh, with the speech from the pro tem and myself, uh, we laid out a pretty definitive plan. Uh, that first and foremost, we wanted to lead by example. If we're going to be asking citizens across this state to do more with less, then so should state government. Uh, we, we've started that process by doing things that have been outside the box, whether it be appointing chairman early, uh, whether it's been naming Democrats to chairman. Uh, I think you're going to see in this speakership, in this house, we're going to do things that uh, maybe traditionally haven't been done. And like I said in my speech, that just because something's always been done that way, doesn't mean it always should be done that way. And uh, so it's going to be a unique perspective. Uh, we also laid out the Show Me Solutions initiative, which basically starts with a pledge. And it's a pledge that we heard the voters loud and clear that we're going to balance the state budget, we're going to force government to live within its means, and we're going to hold the line on taxes, period. Second, we talked about jobs. Our number one priority is going to be job creation and doing anything that we can to encourage economic growth and development, government accountability, education and health care. Those are the five pillars uh, that we are looking at with regards to the Show Me Solutions initiative. My goal is, in a bipartisan fashion, that after 50 days in session, we'll have accomplished at least 75 percent of that Show Me Solutions initiative. Is there more that we're going to do? Absolutely yes, but this is just a starting point, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Do you mean 50 legislative days or 50 days? 50 legislative days. <laughs> Yeah. Don't push us now. <laughs> that would be pretty aggressive. Brady? In your, um, in your speech that you have some rule changes uh, sure. to talk about, and, um, I was wondering what, if you could give us some specifics related to meals or gifts? Or no, well, I mean, basically, here's what we're going to do with the rules. First and foremost, we're going to remove the partisan control uh, of committees. Uh, the way it works, Rudy, is if you have a, a regular standing committee, the speaker appoints the majority members, the minority leader appoints the minority members. On special committees, the speaker appoints everyone. And uh, that we expanded the special committees under Republican control. Uh, it reduces the influence of the minority. I think that was wrong, and I'm going to change it. No, I think you're going to look at other things. And a lot of time, and, and clearly the rules are determined by our majority leader, and, and Tim may want to touch base on this, but another rule that we're looking at is more of a rule that the federal government has, like a closure rule. Many times we'll have a bill come up on the House floor, and there's no discussion on the underlying bill. There's just 50 different amendments, and I think that's not necessarily good for the process. And so under certain circumstances, we're looking at doing a closed rule where there will be no amendments and the discussion will be on the underlying bill. And if it's an issue that's a, it's a big issue for the state, I think that's probably good government. And uh, that's probably the direction we're going to go in. And there may be other changes that, uh, that Representative Jones, our majority leader, may want to institute. And I'm sure we're going to be visiting uh, very shortly on those issues. A lot of folks in the Kansas City, Missouri School District are concerned about what's going to happen with education funding. Uh, and of course, parents throughout the state with the college funding. Sure. Uh, Everyone, all signs point towards huge education cuts. What can you tell parents who are thinking about Well, that? well you know, I would say this, that one, uh, that citizens expect us to live within our means. And that means we have to make difficult decisions. And it also means that we have to prioritize what we think is most important with regards to funding state government. And I will tell you, and I think that caucus would agree with me, that the number one priority for our state government is to fund public education. So, you know, we're, we're going to balance the state budget. We're going to do it in the most respectful, uh, meaningful way we can. And I would suspect uh, that education will be the last thing to cut, not the first. On, on the subpoena issue, is that going to be just for the budget committee or the appropriate? We know the speaker has the authority to, to grant that to any committee he chooses uh, fit. 
but I think a good start will be with the budget committee. Now listen, we're dealing with difficult choices and I think, you know, our budget chairman, Representative Sylvie, has an unbelievably difficult job and their approach chairs do as well. And I want to give them any tool that they can to make sure that they, they craft a budget that recognizes that we have to live within our means and we need to make sure that every tax dollar is spent wisely. So what would you expect them to do with that tool? Well, I, I think that's a better question for him, but, I, but you know, and I sprung it on him this morning. <laughs> and, uh, and he said, thanks. Uh, but, uh, but I will tell you, I think we're going to sit down myself, our leadership team, our budget chairman, and identify what that really means. But, but my point is, I want the citizens of this state to know that the Missouri House under Republican control are serious about doing more with less. Why do you think the subpoena power is needed? Well, I think it, it brings a level of seriousness to it. It requires people that are compelled to come in and visit. And, you know, I mean, I'm not saying, I, and we're looking at the logistics of it, whether we can swear them in or whether they have, or they're forced to swear in. Uh, I think that's a little bit murky and, and we're not sure yet. But what we want people to know from day one is that if we're going to be in a situation where we may have to cut education, where we may have to cut things across the state that are vital, that we're going to do everything we can to cut out of swear first. Does it set up a conflict between the executive and the legislative branch? Well, at times there's a conflict between the executive and the legislative branch. Uh, and listen, my job is to run this house in a manner that's best for the citizens of the state. And if it means giving subpoena power to the budget chairman, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Are you envisioning doing this essentially as you have the subpoena power, use it however you want? Or is it if, if there is some where you feel that the budget committee not getting the answers it's asking? Well, I, I think that's, a, that's uh, a decision that we'll make if that occurs. My hope is that all departments understand. I mentioned this in the, in our, in the speech that we want to work with departments to make sure that they're efficient. We just don't want requests for more money. And uh, uh, I can let Ryan Sylvie quote what's uh, the sign that's outside his office, but it's exactly how I feel. So, what's, what's it say? This is welcome to the House Budget Office. Please ask yourself two questions. One, am I here to ask the chairman for more money than last year? If the answer is yes, proceed to question two. Have you lost your mind? <laughs> I mean, that's, that's really where we're at. So, you know, I, I chose Ryan as the budget chairman because he's a bright, talented guy. And, but clearly, if we grant him subpoena power, I'm sure that he'll work with our leadership team to determine the parameters that he uses that. Can you give us an instance where this administration has been uncooperative to the point where you feel you need the subpoena power? Well, I mean, I would say this, that I think it's a good start to start with we want to have an open and transparent government. Yeah, I mean, you look at how the budget was done last year, how budget was submitted, that he readily admitted what is out of balance. And then we worry about, we discuss a consensus revenue estimate his own budget uh, director in an email said it's like throwing a dart at a dartboard. I just think it's important to have openness and transparency, Rudy, and I think this would help do it. On the regulation, is that, considering that's coming from the state agency, how do you do it? Well, I think in the past, uh, I think it was Representative Deathrow had a bill. I think it was termed the government get off my back act. And mm -hmm. I think there was there were some provisions in there uh, that I think we're going to continue with. So. Um, you talked about human trafficking in your speech. Do you have any specifics of what you'd like to see happen? Well, I just think, first and foremost, I think we have to acknowledge it, that it occurs. And two, uh, we need to prepare to, to increase the sentences on individuals that are charged with human trafficking. And, and I made it pretty clear that I don't think any punishment is too severe. What do you think is really going to happen with the puppy mill repeal effort? And what do you think about you know, the other side saying that you're subverting the will of the people if you repeal that? Well, I, I would say this, that a lot of times you have an initiative petition that, that maybe has some unintended consequences. And I think there's a lot of discussion, not just within my caucus, but actually on the other side of the aisle as well, that there's concerns that it could affect family farmers and livestock. And so, you know, if there's bills that are filed that addresses that, I'm going to do what I do with every other bill. I'm going to refer it. If that chairman sees fit that it has merit, he'll vote it out, and then it'll go to the rules chair. If, that, if the rules chair uh, feels like it has merit, then it'll go to me. I'll put it on the calendar, and we'll move from there. So I haven't made any, any uh, commitments uh, to deal with it, but uh, I certainly know there's a lot of concern from farmers all across the state. In your speech, you noted a moratorium on fees. Would that include extending the <coughs> DNR fees that, uh, that have expired recently? I think we're going to have to take a look at each and every. My, my goal with that is no additional new fees. Uh, I have to look at how it affects existing fees. 
want to make sure I understood on the rule change with, with, where you were considering uh, having an essentially closed bill. Are you talking about not having quorum in some bills? That, that is correct on certain. And, and I would tell you that I visited with Minority Leader Talboy about this issue, and I think you're going to see, a broad, for the first time ever, broad bipartisan support of the rules. Now, keep in mind, we've got 106 <laughs> members. Uh, we certainly didn't have to change the rules to give the minority leader more power to appoint his own members. I did that because I think that's good government. I think the two-party system is good. And I think when both parties participate in it, you've got a better, better outcome. And so, uh, you know, I think uh, it would be used very, very sparingly, and I've already visited with minority leader Tapway. So what would be your criteria for bills? That will be the at the discretion of the rules chair.